Hello, my dear friends. I want to welcome you to this special Bible studies that a lamp unto my feet. I believe that so far it has been a blessing unto your life. May the Lord bless you so much. Today, we're going to study a very, very important lesson. Before we get into today's lesson, I want to remind you, please, if you have not already subscribed to this channel, you are missing out. Please click on the subscribe button right away because this special lesson is going to continue. It is actually a 30-part series, all right? And we are going to continue. So make sure that you don't miss the rest of the lessons that is going to transform your life and help you to live a righteous life as we wait for the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be sure also to click on the share button so that you share with your friends and it will be a blessing unto us. Anytime you find it to be a blessing, be sure to give us a thumbs up so that it would also help us to share the message far and far. God bless you so much. Today, I want to talk about Christianity. What is Christianity? Why Christianity? Who is a Christian? What is available for the Christian? What is the reward of the Christian? What promises are available for the Christian? This is what we want to look at. I'm going to divide this particular topic into two. So today I'm going to share this first part and our our next um, lesson will share the second part. Before we begin, I want to invite you for a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you so much for this privilege. It is wonderful to have or to spend some time with you. Please come and teach us your ways. Help us to understand this lesson so that we may apply it to our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. All right, so Christianity, you know, there are many Christians in the world today, many people who claim to be Christians. It is the biggest religion in the world as we speak. It is growing and it is spreading everywhere, especially in Africa and some parts of the world. It is spreading. But the question is, what is Christianity? What is it all about? Why do we have Christianity? Or who is a Christian? These are some of the things that we want to study. Because for you to be a good Christian, the one who would eventually end up in heaven, you need to understand what Christianity is all about. Okay? If you don't understand this this whole thing about Christianity, you would easily be deceived. Something else may be given to you as Christianity which is not because of ignorance. Remember what the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. If you don't have the right information, you will perish. All right. Okay, so let's continue. Now, when we say Christianity, basically the definition, the simplest definition I can give you from the dictionary, Christianity is a religion that is based on the person and teachings of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Or its beliefs and practices. So Christianity is basically a religion or, or a movement, let me put it that way, that is based on the teachings and the and the practices of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Everything is about him. Alright. Now, if that is the question, then the next question is: who then is a Christian? Alright. Now, who is a Christian? A Christian is basically a follower of Jesus Christ. So a Christianity. Is a religion based on the teachings of Christ. A Christian is the one who follows Jesus Christ. So a Christian is a disciple. The word Christian has its origin. All right. According to the book of Acts chapter 11 verse 26, the disciples, those who first followed Jesus Christ at a point in in time in Antioch specifically, the people there realized that their lifestyle, the way of talking, the way of dressing, the way of behaving, everything about them resembled the Christ or Jesus Christ. So they started calling them first as Christians in Antioch. All right. So that is basically the origin of the word Christians. All right. The next question is why Christianity? Now, this is very, very important. So I want to take you um, back to the beginning. According to the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and he placed a wonderful garden in the east of Eden and planted everything beautiful and made Adam and his wife and gave them instruction that they have dominion over the over everything, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea and everything that creeps on the land. Basically, God created the world and handed over its rulership to man. 
And they were given a simple yet important commandment. And that is, you have access to everything in the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God instructed them that they should not eat lest they will die. But unfortunately, Adam and his wife listened to the, the voice of the deceiver. The devil, through the snake, told them that if they eat the fruit which is found in the middle of the garden, they will surely not die, but rather they will become like God, knowing the difference between good and evil. Unfortunately, Adam and his wife bought into those lies. They ate the fruit, but they eventually died. All right, that was the beginning of what is known as sin or rebellion against God's order started in the world. That is why in Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2, the Bible says, But your iniquities, in other words, your sins, have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Because of sin, man lost his dominionship. Because we obeyed Satan, we became slaves to him. In Romans chapter 6 verse 16, the Bible says, Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. As a result of the sin of Adam and his wife Eve, the generation after them, also followed their path. They did not continue in the path of righteousness, but they followed in the path of sinfulness. They became slaves to sin. They all walked in their own ways. The Bible says in uh, Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6, like sheep, they've all gone astray. And so from that time up to the time where the appointed time for the Messiah to come, men and women walked according to their knowledge. But through God's mercy and grace, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die and to open another door of grace for mankind. And so you understand that in the beginning, God made a perfect world and put man and his wife. Basically, the plan was that Adam and Eve were to give birth and to subdue the earth. That was the instruction given to them by God. But they sinned against God. And as a result of their sin, they were to die. But God gave us another opportunity. And before that opportunity should come, somebody else must or somebody else should come and take the place of our sins, the penalty of our sins. And the only person that was fit to do that was the Son of God, Jesus Christ. That is why the promise was made in John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world. What is the world? The world is you and I, the sinners. Anytime you see the word, the word world in the Bible, it's mostly, depending on the context, referring to people of the world or sinners. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. So those who accept Christ's offer of freedom from Satan must go through certain initiation. Because we have been initiated into sin, once you come back to him, you must also be initiated into righteousness. I hope you are following. We are trying to understand why Christianity. So far, we have understood that Christianity came as a result of sin. Man fell from grace. And God's way of restoring man was to f- allow his son to come and die. So Christ came to die. Now, before you can also be restored, you need to accept the free offer of Christ. You need to have, first of all, believe in him and accept him. Once you accept him, you need to be initiated through a special rite known as baptism. Once you are baptized, what happens is that your old self of sin is buried in the watery grave. And once you come out of the water, you have become a brand new soul. And the moment you come out of the water, everything about you changes. Everything changes. You are no more in the world. You are now a child of God. That is why 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. This is a very, very important test that you might want to write it down. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. So once you accept the offer of Christ, that he died on your behalf, 
and you accept him into your heart, you must be initiated through baptism. Once you are initiated through baptism, you come out as a new creature. All things are new. This means that no more living a life of fear. This means no more living a life of hopelessness. No more living a life of sin and worldliness. I hope you understand. And so because of that, now it says the old has gone, the new has come. So what is the new that has come? The new that has come is that you begin to walk by faith. Just as 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, we live by faith, not by sight. So the new that comes is that you are now a faithful child. You take steps according to faith. Again, we begin or you begin to follow righteousness, rightful living. Romans chapter 6, verse 18 says, you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness rightful living so you become a christian you accept christ so far you are initiated through baptism he buries your old self he fills you with his holy spirit then you begin to follow righteousness you begin to live by faith not by sight and the most important thing that happens again according to the book of galatians chapter 5 is that you now begin to bear the fruit of the spirit not the fruit of the flesh the fruit of the spirit patience peace love kindness, gentleness, all these things begin to come out of your life. That will testify that now a different spirit is operating inside you. And now you have been transformed into the image of Christ. Now, once you begin to bear fruit, then gradually what is known as sanctification process is going on. You are now being sanctified. You are moving from glory to glory. You are being changed from one state to another unto the perfect uh, the perfect image of our Lord Jesus Christ. We begin to transform into heavenly standard. As Paul says in, um, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, he says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay? You'll be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So once you accept the offer of Christ, you go through the baptism and then Christ begins to change you so my dear friend when we say christianity first of all i just want to go back okay when we say christianity first of all it is a religion based on the teachings of christ jesus christ a christian is the one who follows christ why do we have christians because man sinned against god we're supposed to have been dead by now but christ god gave us another opportunity through christ Once you accept his offer, you go through the rite of baptism, then he begins to transform you. He fills the Holy Spirit, he transforms you, you become a new creature, all the old things are passed away. And so even though you continue to be in this sin-forsaken world, you are in the world, but you are not of the world, because the spirit that lives in you is not from the world, but the spirit of God from on high. And so you begin to live a new life. That's is why we have Christians. And so a Christian is the one who has accepted the offer of Christ, has been transformed, renewed, restored, and is living a righteous life. So this is where I'm going to end the first part. And I believe that it has been helpful to you. If there's something that you, do not, you did not understand, you can just ask the question right now. Send it to me on the WhatsApp number on the screen. Or you can put it in the chat box and then we'll get back to you. All right. God willing, in our next section, we are going to look at what is available for the Christian. What is available for the Christian to overcome sin? What is available for the Christian to overcome the issues of the world? What are the promises for the Christian? What is the reward for the Christian? We we'll look at all these things. We we'll look at the tools that is available for the Christian in our next um, lesson. So do not miss that one. Make sure you click on subscribe right away so that when it is posted, you will be notified. Remember, if this lesson has been a blessing to you, be sure to give us, give us a thumbs up and others would also be blessed as well. God bless you. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you so much for helping us to understand what Christianity is about and why we have Christianity. As we prepare for your soon coming, may your spirit help us to live lives that will bring glory to your holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen.